In this lesson, let's explore how we can create our own Vit plugins. So I have already created default Vit project. Let's run development server. And just to make things a little bit easier while developing our plugin, let's use another plugin called Vit Plugin Inspect. And what this plugin will allow us to do is it will provide us with such inspector view where we can see all the transformations that are going to be applied to our modules by all plugins, including our own. So let's quickly install this plugin by using npm and run this command in the terminal. And then let's copy over this code to include this plugin. Let's create configuration file with config.js and paste in here that code. And now I'll have to restart my development server by running npm run dev. And in here, besides our app URL, we can also see inspector URL. And by opening up this URL in the browser, we can access our inspector. So if we see this page, that means our inspector was installed successfully. We can continue. So we're going to create our own plugin, which is going to allow us to import CSV modules and to transform CSV code into valid JavaScript arrays. We're going to use Node.js library called Node CSV. And since this library has several libraries in it, the one that we need is called CSV parse. So let's install this library by running the following npm command in our terminal. And then before actually getting to writing our plugin, let's do a little preparation by adding an empty pre tag in our HTML file. And then let's switch over to main.js and remove everything from here. We're gonna start from scratch. So what we're going to do in here is try to import the CSV file we're going to create soon and then all the content of the CSV file we're going to assign to that pre-tag, specifically to a text content property, like so. But since products will be the array, firstly we have to stringify this array, and which is why we're calling method stringify to turn this array into a string. And of course, this statement should import CSV file, so let's change this extension on .csv. And then we'll add this products.csv file in the root of this project. And here I'm going to insert some random data. We're gonna work with products and their quantities. The first line will contain names of the columns of this CSV file. And all other lines will contain the data for every column. Like so. And of course, by default, Vit does not support importing CSV modules. So when we switch over to the browser, we'll actually get an error. Because as soon as our browser tries to make a request to products.csv file, our server responds with the raw content of the CSV file, which is not the valid ECMAScript module, hence this import didn't work. So before actually importing CSV modules, we have to apply custom transformation which would transform CSV code into valid JavaScript array so it can be imported as other ECMAScript modules. So our transform JavaScript array could be assigned to the products variable in here. And now we're gonna get to the main part of this lesson, which is creating the Vit plugin. So the Vit plugin is basically an object, which we should add to plugins array in our Vit configuration file. So in here, let's create a new object. Firstly, we'll have to specify the name for our plugin. I'm gonna use Vit column CSV. And then most importantly, we have to provide a special function cook called transform, which in our case will be asynchronous. And this function will be called automatically by Vit whenever we're gonna import any modules inside JavaScript files. The first parameter of this hook will be the content of the imported module. And the second parameter will be the path to this module. I'm gonna call these parameters source and ID. So once we have fetched the content of the CSV module, we need to transform this CSV code into a JavaScript array, which we can do by using function called parse. And this function is going to be imported from that CSV parse module that we have installed at the beginning of this lesson. Also to this function, I'm gonna pass configuration object with only one option, columns, that will tell this parse function that our CSV code contains name of columns as the first line in our CSV file, so it can properly transform our CSV code. And then let's go up and in here add an import for the parse function from the csv-parse package and the sync submodule, like so. 
And then by following conventions of it, the transform function has to return an object, which should have a key called code. And in here we have to provide valid ECMAScript code, which is supposed to be exported when people are going to import CSV modules in JavaScript files. And now very important thing to note is that this hook transform is going to be called anytime we're going to import any module inside JavaScript files, not only CSV files. So we actually have to restrict execution of this hook to only CSV modules. And we can do this by adding conditional and wrapping all the code by this conditional. So here we're going to use a regular expression and check if the currently imported module is indeed CSV module. Only then we're going to run this transformation. Otherwise, our plugin is not going to do anything when importing other modules. So just for clarity, let's also print some variable values in here. For example, source, ID, as well as records. And then in the browser, we can see the result of our plugin. So there is no error anymore while importing .csv modules. And what we got instead is actually transformed CSV code into JavaScript array on the page. Let's just make this output a little bit prettier by adding style white space with the value of prewrap to place the content on multiple lines. And if we select the request which was supposed to fetch CSV module from the server, in the response we can see that the response was turned into valid ECMAScript module which exports an array of objects. And apparently it contains objects for every line from the CSV file. And then this variable was stringified and assigned to text content property of the pre tag, which is why we're seeing this array in the stringified form on the page. And now in a server console, let's see the result of these variables. So if I refresh the page, these variables are supposed to be printed in the server console. And there we go. So this value corresponds to the variable source, which contains all content from the CSV file. And the other output, which is the path to the CSV file, corresponds to an ID variable. And finally, after executing this whole thing, we got the transformed CSV into constant called records, which was later transformed into valid ECMAScript module string. And this is actually the result of outputting that variable in the server console. So one more time, while importing that CSV module in our JavaScript file, we got transformed CSV code into JavaScript array, and this JavaScript array was assigned to the products variable, which later was stringified and assigned to text content property of the pre tag. And now let's take a look at the transformation of our custom plugin that was applied to CSV module. So let's open up an inspector, click on our module products.csv, and right here we see the following transformation, which corresponds to the name of our plugin, vit colon csv. So our plugin has read the content of the csv file and transformed this code into valid ECMAScript module. And that's about it. We have successfully implemented our custom vid plugin, which allows us to import csv modules in JavaScript files. Link to the source code will be in the video description.